Hello everyone, my name is Kelly McGowan and I'm representing the Digital Licence Project for Transport and Main Roads. We were asked to provide a presentation which hopefully um, gives you the information that you require around the Digital Licence Project and what we're doing in that space. The Digital Licence app is one of those wonderful innovations where your driver's licence is going to end up on your mobile phone. So what this means essentially is that people who currently carry their wallet just to include their driver's license will no longer need to because their driver's license will be on their mobile phone. This also means though that your photo identification card or your marine license is included within that digital license bundle. What we are doing is creating a digital license and when you onboard, you'll be required to create a digital identity. This will be essentially where you sign up for your digital license app, but you will be required to prove who you are digitally. So the digital identity will also ask you for your birth certificate, your passport or your Medicare card to prove that you are who you say you are digitally. The customers also, as you have your digital license app, we are also introducing a consent based sharing. So to share that information, it will also always ask for you to consent to sharing what you have agreed to. The wonderful thing about the Queensland Digital License app is that we are building to the ISO standard. So the international standard 18013 part five. What this means is that when we are able to travel or we are traveling, traveling internationally, to those jurisdictions that currently sign up to the standard, will be able to share and verify their digital license and they will be able to verify yours. In July 2020, we had legislation passed which enables the digital license to be seen as the equivalent to your physical license. What this means is that it is now legally recognised as a form of identification under Queensland law. What it is and what the wonderful thing about this is that it introduced the concept of a digital proof of age and a digital proof of identity. And it also introduced the concept of privacy by design. So privacy by design is essentially sharing the information that you need to share. So with a physical licence, for example, you have all of your details there on the physical card. With a digital license, you have the ability to actually share that information in different ways. So if you only need to prove that you're over the age of 18, then that is all you need to share. The relevant act that is um, with this legislation is the Transport Planning and Coordination Act, Part 4E. The other wonderful thing is that other legislations were also updated at the same time. So what you'll find is um, legislation such as the Liquor, Accord, Liquor Act also has been updated to reflect the change and the digital proof of age and digital proof of identity. The slide that's up on the screen now is all about visual verification. So the digital license is one of those things where you can visually verify or we also, as I'll cover in later slides, you can actually share um, via sharing a QR code or through a PDF. What we found is that visual verification is used for low risk transactions. The visual verification enables someone to look at the digital license and look at key markers and key things within the license itself, which indicates that it is a legitimate license, digital license that you are looking at. On the left hand side of the screen, what you'll see there is the home screen. So this is what opens up when you first go into your digital license after you've entered your six digit pin. This is key in that what it shows is the person's name and their photo, which is the exact photo that will be on your license and it shows the credentials that they hold. So for example, the person on the screen has a driver's license, a marine license, and a photo identification card. Someone like myself only has a driver's license. So all you'd see is the credential that shows driver's license. If you were to click in on the driver's license, you move to the second image there, which then shows you all the information that currently appears on your driver's license in a physical form with also a couple of extra pieces. What you're looking for when you visually verify a digital license is a couple of things. So the first point there, that the information was refreshed online. What we've found and what we've realized is Queensland is a very big state and unfortunately still has some mobile black spots. So it was really key for us to make sure that our customers had the ability to um, be able to show their license, whether they're online in a mobile serviced area or offline. Your mobile driver's license will also work in an offline area. 
However, what will happen is that date refreshed will only refresh when you're in a mobile serviced area. If you happen to be in a mobile serviced area and that date is not today's date, then you can ask the customer to back out to the home screen, pull down on the screen, which forms a hard refresh and come back into the app. It should then update to today's date. The next point there is around the status indicating the driver's license is current. For most businesses and, and industry, they don't need to worry about whether the license is current. However, our QPS colleagues or our Queensland Police Service colleagues were really keen on this feature. What it enables the driver, digital driver's license to do is actually have real time updates in regards to when a disqualification or a cancellation hits the transport and main road system, it will push an update out to the digital license. What that does is automatically then display that you are disqualified or potentially cancelled. The next piece down there is the green tick with the over 18. If you happen to be under 18, it will be a red cross with under 18. This is a nice feature if you happen to be going out and ask for ID um, to purchase alcohol, for example, or cigarettes. The other information that appears on the digital license is similar to what you will see on your physical license. So it shows the license expiry date. It shows the address details, which you can see dropped off the bottom of the screen there. That is another security feature that you look for. Someone will have to scroll up their screen to be able to share with you their address. If they're unable to scroll the screen, then I would be concerned that you are not looking at a, digital, a legitimate digital driver's license. The other piece that I just wanted to point out is in the background on that screen, you will see a gray grayed out coat of arms. This coat of arms pulsates when, whether you're online or offline, so it will move back and forth in the background of the app. This also shows you that you are looking at a live app and that you are looking at a legitimate piece of identification. As part of the early research in the digital license, we spoke to numerous peak bodies and industry and business in regards to how they currently interact with our physical driver's license. What we learned is that a majority of the time, that people needed to just cite the current license, hence the visual verification and the markers that we ask that you look for. But there are also other ways that businesses needed to interact with the physical license. And so therefore we had to really make sure when we were building it, that we were able to cater to those needs. So there are some businesses, for example, a real estate that likes to keep a copy of the physical driver's license. Unfortunately, it is really hard to take a screenshot or a photocopy of your phone. So what we did was actually built in the ability to share a PDF version of the driver's license with those businesses. What this enables you to do is share with them a digitally signed PDF, and then they can actually store that in their system electronically, which of course for us also means that we're saving on trees. There's also the ability to scan the digital license. So if you have a digital license yourself or you have a verifier app, you can actually scan the digital license and it will then show you and come through to your device to show that you have a legitimate copy of that license. What I'd like to point out is when you do scan and receive it on, a, on another device, the information doesn't stay on that device. As soon as you either back out of your license app or you back out of the Verify app, that information disappears. So therefore, you can't then obtain someone else's license and be utilising it in ways that you shouldn't be. What you can currently see up on the screen is an example of sharing a, of the PDF. So the PDF is, of course, where photocopying would normally be required. So each credential can actually be shared via a PDF. What it does is it sends to the recipient a digitally signed PDF version of the identity that you have chosen to share. This is actually a verified digitally signed PDF that has been verified by TMR. It also enables you to either share this via SMS, so you can text it to somebody, it can be shared by AirDrop and Bluetooth, and it can be emailed. So the wonderful thing about this is you actually don't need to be in the presence of the person who is sharing that because as it comes through, it is digitally signed. And if it's for any reason at the top where you can see the blue line saying signed and all signatures are valid, if that is saying invalid, you can click on it and see if any potential changes have been made. Up on the screen is an example of how you can potentially share that you're over the age of 18. So as we have already mentioned, there is um, 
you know, this is privacy by design. The story that I like to give is that, you know, you have an 18-year-old child that's about to go out to their first time to a pub or a club. And the idea of them sharing their physical license with all their details on it is not something that you particularly want them doing. So what this enables them to do is actually just share the fact that they're over the age of 18 and that they're legally able to enter that premise. So what it does is you click on the share license button down the bottom on, in, on the left hand side image. It takes you through to what we call the sharing bundles. You choose the prove I'm over 18 sharing bundle it always asks for consent. So every time you want to share your information in any form, it asks you to consent to sharing. It then provides a QR code. That QR code regenerates every 20 seconds. So if you're not quick enough to verify, if you're going to digitally verify it, it will um, have to regenerate after the 20 seconds. And then what it actually shares is just the image of the person presenting the license and the fact that they're over the age of 18 a win-win for those who are trying to work out the birth dates and whether they're old enough. This is another example of um, consent-based sharing, but this one really is about the PDF sharing. So what this is showing you is that um, you exact go into the sharing bundles the exact same way through the share license button. Down the bottom is share a printable copy. Of course, it asks for you to consent to share that. And then it provides you the options of sharing. So you can choose email, SMS, or potentially airdrop. And then what it does is emails or texts a copy, a PDF digitally signed copy of that driver's license across to the person who is receiving it. One of the examples I guess that we provide here for is that you're in a car accident and you wanna provide the person that you've had the car accident with with a copy of your license. This is a nice way to be able to do that so that they have a copy of it going forward. This slide here demonstrates or talks about how the digital license is actually safer and more secure than your physical driver's license. Physical driver's license, as soon as you obtain that, um, whether it may be from a lost wallet or someone has dropped it, you of course have all that person's information in your hands. With a digital license, it is actually secured behind one, your device's native security functions. So that might be biometrics, a thumbprint or a pin. And then it is also only accessible via a six digit pin that the person who set up the license has. So even if you, were, even if you lost your mobile phone, the ability to actually get into that license would prove really difficult. The other nice thing to point out here is that if you did happen to lose your mobile phone and you obtained a new one, there is the ability to remotely remove your credential from the phone that you have lost as well. So therefore, if someone did happen to be able to get into it, they're not going to be able to find your information. This is um, another slide whereby it you know, talks about being able to securely verify. One of the things with the um, ISO standard that we are building to is that it produces this unique QR code and the QR code can only be scanned by another digital license or by the Verifier app that will be available as well. What this enables is that um, any reader that is built to the ISO standard will be able to verify the QR code. It's not um, like your QR codes that you see out and about where you can just use your camera to look at it. You actually need to have um, either the ISO standard digital license or the ISO standard Verifier app to be able to verify that information. Back in 2020, we went to the Fraser Coast and ran our first pilot. We were really um, lucky to have over 814 community members participating as part of that pilot. We trained over 160 QPS officers on what to look for when they were out on the road and potentially came across a digital license. We also had over 120 businesses participating, which is really important in regards to community acceptance. What we've realized over the time is that your driver's license is actually rarely used to prove that you can drive. It is more often used as a form of identification so that um, you can prove who you say you are. And the Fraser Coast Pilot also received a 94% satisfaction rating. As part of the pilot evaluation, we've covered that we got a 94% overall satisfaction rating. But one of the key things that was um, that came out for us in the feedback from the community members on the Fraser Coast was that it was convenient and easy, it was high value, it was safe and secure and trusted. It's important for transport and main roads to maintain that trust in the driver's license credential. It is something that we put a lot of effort into making sure that the digital version is secure, it's private, and it is 
absolutely trusted by those who are using it. One of the um, things that we also asked the customers up on the Fraser Coast when we were there was what are the future features that they're looking for? So those sort of included things like biometric access, adding in other TMR products, um, you know, being able to change your address through the app and um, also for, you know, things like push notifications for when, um, you know, things might be due from a transport and main roads perspective. So you know, this feedback is really about incorporating the voice of the customer. We, right from the beginning, right even back to the procurement stage, included customers within this journey. And we wanna make sure that we're continuing to build an app for Queenslanders by Queenslanders. So we are going to be conducting an expanded pilot in Townsville. One of the key things that we realized as part of the Fraser Coast um, pilot was that we had functions and features that you know needed to be updated, they needed to be smoother. One of those was our onboarding process. We realized up there that it was quite a clunky process and we want to make sure that we are able to scale this to the whole of Queensland eventually and make sure it's streamlined and easy for people to onboard and actually download that app to their phones. Um, Townsville is a larger demographic. The, the population size is much more. It also is a different demographic. There's a higher proportion of young people up in Townsville. We want to be able to test our scaling and what we call hardening of the app. So there would be nothing worse for us to roll this out to the whole of the state of Queensland and all of a sudden the app stopped working because there's too many people trying to download it. We want to test that out with a population size that will really give us a good indication of how we're going in that space. The other thing about Townsville is it has a safe night precinct. So legislatively at the moment, when you enter a safe night precinct, venue that is in the safe night precinct you are required to provide a certain amount of detail to the venue itself so that is your photo and your name and your date of birth this information is actually gathered currently from your physical card so they scan it as you enter the safe night precinct and it is stored in their back end system for a period of 30 days what we are doing is working with the scanning companies in regards to the um, scanning of the digital license enabling them to still gather the required information that they need to keep for the 30 days to ensure that they meet their legislative requirements. What's next? We're heading to Townsville in late 2022, followed by a statewide release in 2023. We absolutely will continue to work with business and industry in regards to integrating and adopting the digital license. We know how important it is for business and industry to be on this journey with us and to continue to accept the digital license in the way that they accept the physical license. We also want to make sure that our customers are aware that this is an opt-in process. So you will still receive your physical card in the, as well as the ability to opt in to having the digital license. We will apply the lessons learnt from the pilot so things like onboarding, for example, we know during the first pilot on the Fraser Coast that this was an extremely clunky process for our customers. So we want to be sure that you know, the onboarding process is smooth and it maintains the security and privacy that our customers have come to expect. There will be the self-service re password reset, user interface updates and accessibility improvements, ensuring that all Queenslanders have the option to opt in to the digital license. There's also real-time updates being brought in. What this means is, for example, if you change your address in the back-end transport and main road system, as soon as that address update has been made, it will push through to your digital license. So your most up-to-date details appear on your license. We're also looking at future app functionality for after we've launched statewide. So these things are like your biometrics, so utilizing your native devices biometrics, inclusion of registration and other TMR services, and including other government credentials as well, such as your blue cards and your yellow cards. Thank you for um, being part of this presentation and I hope that you received the information that you required. By all means, please reach out to us if you have any questions in regards to the digital license.